Maryland women's soccer has had a roller coaster season thus far. But what specifically hasn't clicked yet for the Terps? And who has stood out against some of the nation's highest ranked teams? We'll dive into those questions and more coming up on this edition of The Left Bench in Focus. Today we were very good with the details. We need to get focused on the process and that's the message. Welcome back to the Left Bench in Focus presented by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Laura Shaughnessy alongside Ryan Martin talking all things women's soccer. And Ryan, this definitely hasn't been an ideal regular season for the Terps. Yeah, Laura, between having zero wins in conference play and a scoreless last few games, the Terps just can't seem to get it right. Maryland women's soccer most recently took the pitch on Friday, visiting Ohio State in its final of three straight road games. But continuing a troubling trend against Big Ten competition, Maryland put itself in an early deficit that was too much to overcome. Then number seven, Ohio State, came into this one undefeated at home and took almost no time to settle in at Memorial Stadium. First, Peyton McNamara in the seventh minute. And then OSU fans barely had time to sit down before the Buckeyes doubled their lead 24 seconds later as Kalen Dadakovic scores. Maryland goalkeeper Liz, Liz Beardsley bounces back from the early goals and makes three straight saves, but the Terps' offense is nowhere to be found. Finally, you see the celly right there as Jacita Bodham adds one more for Ohio State in the 67th minute. The exclamation point in the Buckeyes' 3-0 win. Next up, Maryland faces number 20 Penn State today in the Terps' second-to-last home game of the regular season. Maryland is currently 4-16 against the Nittany Lions in their last 20 meetings. Penn State's 28 goals far surpasses Maryland's 13, a strong offense from PSU. In their last meeting, Maryland was scoreless and Penn State brought the power, winning 4-0. After the Ohio State loss, Maryland continues its scoreless streak and is still winless in conference play. However, Penn State tied Rutgers last week to put them at 3-2-1 and and one in conference play. Maryland is seeking its first victory over Penn State since 2004 and is holding on for another chance to clinch its first Big Ten win this season. Coach Megan Ryan Nemser has acknowledged the team's recent struggles, but is taking each loss as a lesson, encouraging the Terps to look forward and trust the process on the road ahead. We have to continue to focus on the process, focus on the details. Um, I know that they obviously see today as, as a loss, but as a, as a coach and having a plan for this program, it was a, it was a good step forward, and we need to continue to build off that. We want to win as, as bad as anybody right now but we can't get focused on the wins and losses. We need to get focused on the process, and that's the message. Megan Ryan Emser is right about the Terps having slowed down tremendously in Big Ten play. Yet there's still time to right the ship with five regular season games to go. But first, let's take a step back and look into how Maryland's season has quickly gone from ups to downs. The Terps has finished non-conference play with a strong 3-2-3 and record, highlighted by the play of sophomore Kennedy Bell. You see Bell playing everywhere right here. Netting the opening two goals in the Terps' 4-0 win over VCU, that was a lone multi-goal game for a Terp this season, and you can see it's a feat that has the whole team dancing right here. But since that win over the Rams, Maryland fans have had little reason to boogie. The Terps have gone 0-5-1 in Big Ten play, with the losses coming by nearly three goals per game. Maryland suffered rank losses to Michigan State and Ohio State during that stretch, forcing Ryan Emser to simply watch on as teams consistently outshot the Terps. Conference opponents are averaging over 12 and a half more shots per game than Maryland this season, pressuring the Terps' back line early and often. So Maryland has had a disappointing start in one of collegiate women's soccer's toughest conferences. Yet as we've heard, head coach Megan Ryan Nemzar remains level-headed. But how exactly has she done it? When looking back on Ryan Nemzar's career thus far, what's prepared the third-year head coach to remain so optimistic? Well, the journey for Ryan Nemzar all starts in Piscataway. Between her time as a star defender, then assistant coach Ryan Nemzer spent 18 years in the Big East and Big Ten at Rutgers before taking over Maryland's program after 2021. And Ryan Nemzer's inaugural season came with great milestones at Ludwig, bringing Maryland back into the conversation during conference play. 
yet she wasn't able to find the same success in her final 30 seasons as the Scarlet Knights' associate head coach. You see here, after winning 70 games over that three-year span at Rutgers, that goes down to just over 20% at Maryland. But there's still five regular season games to go for Ryan Nemzart and company, giving Maryland fans a reason to be optimistic as Maryland looks to end off their season on a high note, Laura. Part of that struggle for Ryan Nems Nemzer, we've mentioned it already, lack of goal scoring. It has been 718 days since Maryland women's soccer last scored in a Big Ten match, as the Terps have been held scoreless in conference play for the past two seasons. TSC's Ben Messinger is in Studio B to break down this unprecedented streak. Ben? Yeah, guys, Maryland women's soccer hasn't scored a Big Ten goal in what seems like forever. It has been 16 consecutive conference matches where Maryland has been held off the score sheet. The last time the Terps scored a goal in Big Ten play was on October 23, 2022, the last match of the season at Purdue, where the Terps won 3-1. 2022 was the first season under head coach Megan Ryan Nemzer, and conference struggles have snowballed ever since. Maryland won three conference matches in 2022, but much of that roster wasn't inherited from the previous regime. 2023 was the start of the streak and the real start of a Ryan Nemzer recruited team. After going 3-1-3 three, three in non-conference play, the Terps entered Big Ten play with nine goals scored. Little did the Terps know an Ava Morales penalty kick goal against Binghamton would be their final goal of the season, and you guessed it, the foreseeable future. The Terps proceeded to go 0-9-1 in Big Ten play and failed to score a single goal. Conference opponents scored a total of 28 goals against the Terps in that span. Maryland ended 2023 on a sour note, but looked to make changes heading into 2024. The Terps brought in a nationally ranked recruiting class of nine freshmen this season to turn the tide. Non-conference play saw the Terps go 3-2-3 with 13 goals scored, finishing off with a 4-0 victory over VCU. The Terps looked good and began Big Ten play on September 12th and have played six of their 11 conference matches. Thus far, Maryland is 0-5-1 and have been outscored 14-0, making it 16 consecutive Big Ten matches where the Terps have not found the back of the net and a stagnant offense continues. Maryland has five remaining chances to break the streak in 2024. The Terps will finish their, off their 2024 slate hosting Penn State and Nebraska. Then they'll hit the road to face Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Rutgers. If the Terps fail to score in their final five matches, the Terps will head into 2025 with it being over 1,000 days since their last Big Ten goal. And guys, for now, Megan Ryan Nemzer and company have a lot of work to do on the offensive side of the ball to hopefully gain some traction and end this long and looming streak. But it makes you wonder, does the pressure from the streak building and building make it harder on the Terps to perform? Back to you guys. Thanks, Ben. And yeah, we'll see if they can kind of draw back that mental pressure and, and hopefully find the back of the net today against Penn State. Yeah, Laura, I think you heard Ben say it right there. It's been 16 matches for Maryland in Big Ten play where you don't score a goal, not able to pull off a win too. That pressure does have to be mounting at some point. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have a fun game in store to determine who between Laura and I knows Maryland women's soccer the best. And as always, we'll crown our women's soccer Terp of the year and get into everyone's favorite top five plays of the Terp season. Stay with us. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you.
Welcome back to the Left Bench In Focus, presented by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Laura Shaughnessy, here with Ryan Martin, and now we're going to switch gears to play a fun game that puts our women's soccer knowledge to the test. Yeah, Laura, let's see which one of us knows our soccer terps the best. This could be fun. Yeah. All right. Why don't you get us started with our first question? All right, Laura, my first question for you is last season, Maryland women's soccer had a newcomer earn all Big Ten freshman team honors for the first time since the Terps joined the Big Ten in 2014. So it's been over a decade when one Terp has the honor. Who was the Terp who took it home last year? I'm going to have to say, given the number of minutes played, and I do remember this one from last year. It was a pretty memorable moment. Um, I'm going to have to go Kennedy Bell. You'd be right on. All Kennedy right, Bell had a sensational right. freshman year. She'll take home that first spot. You're one for one so far. Nice, nice. Let's keep it going. Uh, Megan Ryan Nemser coached at Rutgers in the past, but she also played there. So what years and what position did she play at Rutgers? Well, lucky for me, I just did the feature on Megan Ryan Emser, <laughs> so I know a little bit. I'm going to say that she played defender at Rutgers when they were still in the Big East. I think that was a good time ago. I want to say 2004 to 2007 was when Ryan Emser was at Rutgers. All right, and that, you'd be right. There you go. <laughs> so one, I'm one for one, Laura's one for one. Now it's going to get a little bit more competitive. We'll see yep. here. And speaking of coaches, Laura, uh, who was Maryland women's soccer's head coach before Ryan Emser took over, and how long was that coach here in College Park for? So I do remember this one. It's going to be Ray Leone, mm -hmm. um, and I believe Nemser started in 21, um, right around the time he ended with six seasons with the Terps. You're right on with both accounts. It was Ray right. Leone here for six seasons, now at Northern Arizona with the Lumberjacks coaching one side. Nice, nice. All right, we're on a roll. Uh, which pro Terp has over 175 appearances in the National Women's Soccer League as of April this year? You really test me with this one here. Got to go way back into <laughs> Got to think about it a little. Knowledge. I'm going to guess that it was a, a former Terp who had a lot of success a while ago. I'm from Massachusetts, and I know Haley Brock was from Massachusetts as well. She okay. was great for Maryland. Would it be Haley Brock here? You would not be correct. It would be Jasmine Spencer, though. Oh, so I guess you won that one. Yeah, Congratulations. I guess. Well, I guess. Good one there. So I, <laughs> I drop one. I got one more question for you, Laura. All right. Uh, speaking of longevity at Maryland, between the active players at Maryland, who leads the Terps in most games played at Maryland, and how many games has she played overall in her career here? Oof, this is a tough one, ending on a tough note. Um, well, I'm going to guess that it's a senior, mm -hmm. given um, right. being playing the most minutes. Um, I'm going to have to go with Hallie Johnson, yep. but I'm not sure of how many minutes. I'll give you a half a point there, maybe <laughs> three or four. <laughs> do it we do Hallie half points? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyways, winning on this one, but Hallie Johnson, 33 games played. How about nice, that? And we nice. can talk about the experience that's needed with Ryan Nemzer's team. She comes over after a freshman season at UNC Wilmington, and she's been a staple. 33 games played for the Terps so far in her career. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I think we did pretty good with that. I think so. Congratulations on the win. I'll have to get my <laughs> revenge at some point soon. <laughs> you, did your, you did your part, too. We'll do it. Even with the attacking struggles those mentioned, there's been one Terp, Laura. We already mentioned her name, and she has still made her mark offensively in her second season with the Terps. This year's Maryland Women's Soccer Terp of the Year so far, it just has to be sophomore defender Kennedy Bell. As Turk fans saw on this inaugural goal of the 2024 season, opposing defenses cannot assume Bell is just a defender in Ryan Nemzer's scheme. Bell leads Maryland with three goals, two assists, and eight points overall, showing why she's a dynamic piece that's earned the freedom to play all over the pitch under Ryan Nemzer. Congrats to Kennedy Bell for being named our Maryland Women's Soccer Terp of the Year. Now let's get into our top five plays of the season so far. Brian, why don't you get us started? Definitely, let's do it, Laura. And we'll start at number five, where against Stony Brook, Kelsey Smith breaks the deadlock. How about the speed from Smith here? Catches up to the through ball, a quick touch with the right foot. It's a 1-0 Maryland lead early. Now we're heading over to the OSU game where Beardsley dives and saves. What a great display of being quick on her feet, as always. Great job by Beardsley. From defense to offense, make way for the freshman, Laura. Look at this goal from Taryn Ray Bone into the teeth of the Towson defense and scores for Maryland. Only a freshman, but making an impact. Yep, and then we got Beardsley again here on a free kick save. Could have gone right past her, and, and she got the save in time. Good save from Beardsley, but you know it had to be number one. Emily Leonard goes Olympico for her first career goal. You see it again right there from another angle. Leonard, a statement way to get her first goal in College Park. A big play there for the freshman. And, and Laura, you look at Maryland soccer so far this season. 
What do you think is the best goal so far? Is it the Olympico from Emily Leonard, or would it be William Colvick, a goal from midfield against Detroit Mercy? Two good ones to choose from. I'm still going Olympico. That's mm. personally my favorite. I think the reaction from the team was priceless, and you could tell they really were caught off guard by it. So I'd agree with I'm that. I'm going Olympico. I, I like the Olympico. The bend it like Beckham all the way in, right. too. A tough angle. I don't know if I could do that. I certainly couldn't do it on the stage that Leonard did it on as a freshman. Yeah, absolutely. And that will do it for this edition of the Left Bench in Focus. Brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. Nathan Schwartz and Jonas Evans will be behind the desk next week. Franklin Zestis will have your coverage of Maryland women's soccer versus Penn State later today. And be sure to stay up to date with all of our coverage on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and X. We'll see you next time.